onion, onion garlic. garlic. Ah, I just need parsley. Oh, if only I could just reach out and grab it. What? What just happened? Did I just teleport? Can I teleport? Once, it is said, we roam the stars with impunity. I do not know if that is true. All I know is a decaying world where we squabble over schools. Most of the games we show you here on our Kickstarter video get funded. But at the number 5 spot, to hero echoes of the Astral Empire shows the other bitter reality of being on Kickstarter. At the time of filming, it has about a day left to run and has raised $60,000, $8,000 short of its target goal. It's a tough spot, The 60 grand says there's demand for this game, but the make or break nature of Kickstarter means Whalehammer Games won't see a cent of it. Speaking of the game itself, Tahira focuses on a civilization that once wandered the stars but fell to an Arab-like desert stuck in medieval times. In a lot of ways it echoes the Banner Saga, including a similar hand-drawn art style, rich story and turn-based tactical gameplay on a grid. Barring a miracle, however, we won't be seeing Tahira for a while. We were losing the war. The cruel. They slaughtered us with a horrifying single-mindedness. Taking only 40 hours to get funded, Halcyon 6 is already a bit of a success story. If we tried to explain why this happened, our best effort would be an FTL space management roguelike blended with the base system of XCOM and on the ground combat. The other reason could be that it was part of the Square Enix Collective, but the first explanation sounds cooler. Elaborating on the game, Halcyon 6 takes place during a war that has humanity on the brink. Your sudden discover of the abandoned starbase Halcyon 6 is perhaps civilization's last hope, and so managing it and your dysfunctional crew to turn the tide of the war becomes solely your task. The only thing that bugs us about Halcyon 6 is its seeming lack of a specific identity. Where a similar game from last month's Kickstarter and Orion Trail stood out with its personality and wit, Halcyon 6 appears simply as a common mix of other games. It still has plenty of time to become something more, but currently we're having trouble pinpointing what that is. The JRPG has some of the most passionate fans in gaming, so it's no surprise that Edge of Eternity, an independently made tribute to the genre, exists and that has been funded by more than 100 grand its target. As a JRPG love letter, Edge of Eternity isn't exactly a revelation. In fact, you could sum it up with a Final Fantasy comparison. Turn-based combat, experience-based character progression, magic and a beautiful 3D world. However, there are definitely some original points of intrigue. In particular, you get to ride giant cats called Nekaru that can be bred Pokemon style to get all different kinds with different abilities. Also, one of the really cool stretch goals that's already been reached is bringing one of the original Chrono Trigger composers, Yasunori Matsudi. Sorry for the pronunciation. It'll be interesting to see just how Edge of Eternity stacks up against its idols. To those who played games in the 90s, the word Descent probably brings back some fond memories and emotions. Back in the day, the series became the poster child of six degrees of freedom shooters and was responsible for the outbreak of the genre before the turn of the century. Present day, things are different. Shooters firmly have their feet planted on the ground far away from the sky and the six degrees of freedom of the 90s. A bunch of industry veterans are lifting shooters back up to their former heights with Descent Underground. A Descent reboot for nostalgia and a new generation. The promise is a recapturing of the frenetic chases, shooting and manoeuvring through tight and twisting asteroids and a heavy multiplayer focus of the originals. This is all then topped with luxuries of today including customizable ships, destructible voxels, virtual reality and of course a modern engine and graphics. And then you have a modernised Six Degrees of Freedom classic ready to serve.
Crowfall is a type of game Kickstarter is perfect for. An outrageously bold idea that would be diluted by a concerned publisher, but that can instead be realised unhindered thanks to public funding. Whether this is actually for better or worse is another story for another time. But of more relevant importance, what exactly makes Crowfall so audacious? Well, it's a combination of two conflicting ideas, MMO and strategy. You see, MMOs are contained in permanent worlds, while strategy games conclude when someone wins. Think World of Warcraft versus Age of Empires. To overcome this, developers often craft have made a system where your character is permanent, but the worlds they inhabit are eventually destroyed. You may become the king in one world, but three months later it could be wiped, and then other than your character and their perks, you're back at square one in another world. This essentially makes Crowfall a persistent contest for power, or in other words, a Game of Thrones. Believe it or not, that rather ugly pun is actually quite relevant, because one of Crowfall's major aims is to create a world of factions, vassals, betrayal and conquest just like Game of Thrones, something online gaming is mostly devoid of. There are a lot more features to Crowfall, most of them too complex for us to understand, but what ultimately impresses us about Crowfall is its quest to freshen up the sometimes stale MMO genre by changing the game world and its composition on a consistent basis. Or in fewer words, it's fresh. Thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indieformer.